This is the O Review Podcast. O Review. Hello, welcome again. Um, I had a little bit of time, so I decided to do another episode because uh, there's been some requests to keep doing a few more of those. Um, my channel's been a little bare lately. I am working on a seven-part series, which has been highly requested, so that will hopefully appear maybe in the next couple months or so. It's going to take a lot of work, a lot of research. I have about 11 pages scripted already, so it's going to be one of those videos that takes a lot of time to put together, but hopefully it should be worthwhile in the end. So I was looking through my list, and um, my next thing on my list was an eye shave, specifically the Seafoam one. This one um, kind of kicked off my vintage. I Actually, the vintage I had before this was a Sub-Zero number 4 in Blue Iridium with the Planet X frame. But I really started getting interested in the really, really old frames, and it doesn't get much older than the eye shade. So the eye shade appeared in 1984. It was a follow-up to the Oakley goggle or the O20 goggle, and Jim Jannard after going into grips and then going into MX goggles, decided that he was going to take the advantage of a goggle but turn it into an eyeglass frame. So if you take a look at the front of this, it's very similar to what the goggles look like in the day. It's a very big shield frame, uh, more function than look, but it does have a few things that are in favor of someone who's like cycling or doing some sort of activity like that. Um, these were popularized in cycling originally, and as you see, they came in a few different colors and also a few different configurations. So the seafoam that I have here has the basic hook stem. And if you take a look at the back of this, you'll notice that there's a few different indentations here. And this will slide in and out. Given how old this is, I'm not going to attempt that. But basically, this would come out. There's two dimples inside that would hit one of these divots, and then that would stay in place. Alternatively, and they do come completely out, they came in an even more hooked configuration, which will allow you to wrap it over your ears and have it stay on even more. So in addition to those, they would come with these foam kits that you could buy separately. And the sea foam, the one that I got, it has some very basic foam in it, but nothing terribly substantial. The white violet one I have, or violet mirror as it was called back then, has the foam somewhat more intact, and if you take a look at the uh, original ones, you notice that there's actually two different layers of foam. And this is the same on the goggles, too. There's a thick, more dense foam that goes right to the frame, and then there's one that's a little more padded, so the one that absorbs your sweat and goes right against your face, a lot more absorbent, a lot fluffier, and then there's one that's a little bit more sturdy, so that actually provides more of the cushion against your face. So basically, this one, the made uh, the fluffy foam completely gone, just has the thick foam on it. My black one, which is actually my best condition one, there's really nothing wrong with this frame except the brow pad had never been applied, so this one actually benefits from that, even though it wasn't complete. It ends up being a little bit better quality. Uh, this one here, you can tell just everything got completely disassembled on it. Now this one has slightly different, this is my yellow uh, orange mirror. This one has um, a vented lens, which came out slightly later. And you notice the foam goes inside the back of the lens here. So the foam on the vented and the foam on the non-vented were slightly different, and they were for different applications. Uh, main reason being is that they wanted to have some sort of foam between the vent holes in your face so that it was filtered out slightly before the air actually ended up escaping out and giving you the anti-fog benefits. Um, Here's another one. This one looks like it had foam on at one point, but it's completely off. So I don't know if maybe a little bit of goo gone might be good to take that off. But uh, this is another example of the vented lens. Um, there were two boxes that the eye shades came in because they did span different periods of time. This is the later box, and you see these a lot on like frog skins, uh, the earlier frog skins, M frames. It's the clear box that a lot of models came in. Now, what I'd like to get my hands on, and it probably won't ever happen because they're extremely rare, these originally came in boxes that mimicked the grip boxes. So they were bright red, they had the classic logo, they looked really nice, probably not too many survived because they were made out of cardboard and they were so old. 
Uh, but those were sort of another cool addition as well. Finally, 2010, and I did a video on these before, which is one of my scripted videos, which again, take forever to make, but I think they come out better, is the staple eye shade. And a few of these came out in um, other configurations. There was an Okini edition, which was, uh, it was either a black or white frame, but it had a gradient lens. It's really the same thing. So it's got the, the divots, uh, the same hooked frame. These ones didn't come with the circular hooked frame. They just came with the, the standard. But basically, if you look at them side by side, they are pretty much the same mold. There's really nothing that would differentiate the two, um, except for the tennis ball fuzz on the outside that makes everything a mess. So eventually these sort of went by the wayside. The M-frames came out, uh, and then before that, the blades, the razor blades, the slits came out. So these really fell out of favor pretty fast towards the end of the 80s. And once the M-frame hit, the sub-zeros and etc., uh, such an old design really didn't have a lot of favor, so it was quickly replaced. But being the first glasses that Oakley produced, it's uh, really one of those collectible models that I highly recommend anyone who's into vintage getting. And as you, see, as you can see, I was able to accumulate a few of them. They do tend to go for a lot at times, but due to the varying qualities, if you want to sacrifice a little bit of quality, and you're probably going to have to if you get something this old, uh, really, out of all of these, this one's the only one that's kind of in so-called mint condition. Uh, this is my first one, so, you know, it's got some minor lens flaws. Obviously, the foam is going to be the big thing, and the fact that that doesn't have foam helps in its favor. Um, but, you know, anything with iridium is going to possibly have some pockmark scrapes, and uh, non-iridium, same deal. So, uh, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoy this. It's just a real quick one. I'm going to keep chugging along on that seven part series that I hope you enjoy at some point. So until then, I will see you later. Thank you. O Review. Want even more Oakley? Then check out the O Review, the premier informational and community site dedicated to all things O. Check out the database of over 5,000 glasses and 10,000 overall items. While you're there, view frame lens options, generational variations, Timelines, serial lists, terminology, articles, and our monthly collector's spotlights. If you still want more, join as a member and participate in our live chat room, post on the forums, and document your collection. You can also add to the photo gallery, manage your reviews, get front page exposure for your videos, and try to collect achievements. Hope to see you there.